I've read a quote, kind of reminds me of a quote that I read from you that stated, I have speculated that essentially everything that we can currently manufacture today without biology, we will be able to manufacture with biology and with potential advantages. Biology is intrinsically atomically precise, and it's scalable to cover the whole planet essentially for free. That's that, pretty revolutionary. I mean, yeah, um, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, that's a that's accurate uh, reflection of of how I felt then and how I feel today. Um, why why is it reasonable? Uh, so it they are atomically precise. Uh, it it doesn't biology does not yet gracefully use the entire periodic table or all the chemical bonds that you might want to make out of that periodic pairs of, of elements. Um, but it goes, it comes pretty quick. It, it uses a lot, pretty close. It uses a lot of uh, uh, inorganic bonds that, that, that might surprise some people. So you can make, there are biological systems if you look widely enough. And now we're not talking about necessarily, uh, you know, your enzymatic tools, which might have been implied in the previous, but uh, all, you know, all the things that all the chemistry and physics that biology uses. They can make fiber optic things that are fiber optics like in, in sponges. Uh, you can make uh, semiconductors, ferromagnetic materials that, that help it like compass. Uh, there are um, um, all kinds of dichroics and um, gratings and that, that, that generate colors, uh, you know, and um, uh, and the list goes on on the materials that, that are used uh, either naturally or where the the enzymatic apparatus that is used actually can if you give it a, a new set of uh, elements it will incorporate those um, you could say misincorporate them but the point is atomically precise and that that it can reproducibly make a molecule with thousands of atoms in it and the, and the next molecule over has exactly the size thousand atoms and exactly the same configuration, at least, you know, off by less than uh, an atomic bond in length. So, so it's really, this is not something that happens in Silicon Valley or other, you know, worldwide manufacturing of, of silicon based uh, circuits or in any other inorganic circuits. Uh, it is, so far unique to biology. Another thing that's unique to biology is the ability to replicate. So you can make a copy of yourself. So to make a copy, you know, th the idea that a cell phone could make a copy of a cell phone is ludicrous for, so far. Um, but there might be a, a use of a hybrid system where we, we use biological inspiration, electronics inspiration, make hybrid devices that can replicate, use the, the full periodic table Eliminate poverty sounds like a moonshot, but it, it, but I think it qualifies as a as a positive grand challenge, more like the satellites than the moonshot, uh, and it and it may not be so uh, far off in that there's a there could be a virtuous site positive feedback loop where uh, you reduce the medical load from infectious disease and other diseases uh, that that slow down, not just the individual that has a disease, but the whole family, whole village around that person because they want to, they care for that person. And, uh, and then that, that lightening of the medical load results in a little more time and money to dedicate to things like educating um, children, um, adult women and so forth. And then that results in better medical care and it just gets better and better. And it could, it could uh, help. The other thing that could help is, you know, better agriculture, maybe less uh, use of land and water for animals and more on nutritious plants. Um, golden rice is an example of something uh, where vitamin A deficiency kills uh, a million people a year. Um, and golden rice is one cost effective way of reducing the poverty burden, you know, to a to town with a, f a few blind people that were likely to go be dead within a year or two of, of going blind. But um, uh, so anyway, I think I think that the, the diseases of poverty um, can be eliminated 
and, um, in that manner. Uh, we also uh, could, in principle, HIV is one of the infectious diseases that is mostly human-specific. Even though a lot of these so-called human-specific diseases did come from an animal originally, I mean, where, did, where else did it come from? Um, but it's so rare that if you eliminated it, that you know, the, the it would be a, essentially extinct, like smallpox. I mean, there could be another pox virus that replaces smallpox someday. But the point is, the smallpox has been eliminated for so many decades that it is unquestionably a success. And I think the same thing could be done with HIV. Uh, you know, con um, condoms is uh, another thing that that works a little bit better. Uh, in the industrialized nations. Uh, it doesn't really necessarily protect against uncooperative partners or rape, that sort of thing. So uh, I think we need, there's a, there's a multi-pronged effort to uh, eliminate HIV, but once we do, it could be like smallpox. It's been recalcitrant, the vaccines, which are so powerful, uh, 